Hi guys, so I'm back with part two of uh, the hair that I was creating earlier. Uh, so we've done the meshing, oh whoops, uh, we've done the meshing so now it's time to actually make it game ready. And there's still a couple of things that need to happen for that one. Uh, I need to upload it over an existing hair uh, in game and I'm going to do it over a base game hair so that it can be used for base games. Then uh, I need to weight paint it and I also need to create the hat cuts for it and also the other colours of the texture. So what I've done now is I have um, appended, hmm, no actually I opened uh, a base game here and I've appended the mesh that I created earlier over that because I will be combining those later. Uh, but I think what I'm doing here first is, uh, yes, I'm going to do the weight paint first. So I'm going to do a weight transfer because these hairs are generally kind of the same shape and uh, the same length. The only thing is uh, I've still, I still have the hair in two separate parts. So I have a part for the, f for the bangs and I have a part for the loose hair. And because I didn't want to uh, weight paint the bangs uh, because I thought that maybe they would move differently because it's a pair of bangs and you know, it may have some weight over the eyebrows. I don't know, so I just kept those separate. So I'm weight transferring the loose hair. And the reason why I have to do that is because I actually flipped it. Uh, earlier on in uh, part one I flipped the hair so um, I don't I don't I've never actually tested it but technically that should mean that the left side of the hair now moves with the right side of the shoulder which is a bit weird which is why I'm weight transferring the hair so anyway long story short while I was rambling on have I done it yet Yes. <laughs> so it's time to uh, actually create the hat cuts. And for that, I'm going to add a mesh. I'm going to add a cube. I'm going to make the cube smaller while still in object mode uh, by pressing size, S for size. Uh, I don't know if I actually go in edit mode as well. No, I stay in object mode. So uh, I've just put the, just see the cube as a hat. Uh, imagine that that is a hat so I've put it exactly in the place where the hat cut is with the other one and now I'm going to use the bullion modifier uh, and I'm actually right now I'm making a little bit of a mistake I'm trying to add it over the cube I was on the wrong object for it so now I've gone to the actual hair and I'm uh, press difference and then use the apply the bullion modifier to cut the hair off now of course this isn't going to be perfect yet because we want the hair to look like it's coming from underneath the hat, so I'm going to need to squish the edges in to make it look like it's being squished down by the hat and flowing out from under it. And right now I am just uh, trying very hard to select the areas of the hair um, that I don't want to be affected by me manipulating the size. So the hairline, often you get um, ugly artifacts if you do mess around with the hairline or at least I do and then they're always difficult to correct later on so I'm always very very careful with the hairline it's like I'm not touching it I'm not touching it <laughs> so I'm just uh, deselecting all the bits that I accidentally selected whilst trying to select the areas that I do not wish to affect so now I'm just going to hide that by pressing H and then I am going to select the edge and uh, try and manipulate that in a second once I am done selecting everything and if you are wondering what key combinations I'm using you can see it in the bottom left corner uh, because I have a, a screen key capture on <laughs> anyway you can see what I'm pressing uh, so I've also put the um, oh what's the name of it um, proportional editing on uh, yeah <laughs> that took me a while to figure out <laughs> you can't tell because I edited it out <laughs> anyway I've used proportional editing uh, just to squish everything in and it is actually going to take me quite a while to readjust everything uh, so it's not clipping through the head or it's close enough to the head so I'm just gonna shut up and let you watch that <laughs> So now I've unhidden the hairline and um, I'm just checking because that area over there is still clipping through the head a bit and with the cube I could see that that will be visible uh, if she has a hat on and you don't suddenly want a bald spot where there wasn't one earlier so I'm doing some more adjusting here. 
Oh, and here I was trying to stick these vertices together, but um, I didn't realize that with the magnet in the bottom, it was actually set to increments rather than vertices. Uh, here I corrected it and made it so that it um, clips to vertices rather than increments. That's why it wasn't working. I was like, click, 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 click. Arrgh! But it was because I pressed the wrong button. So there we go, that's the first hat cut uh, done. So now I'm just um, making sure that the base game hat cut is selected and my hair is not, and then I merge them together and then I deleted the uh, base game hair because um, that one was selected and the other one was not. So I could just go X and delete. And I've just done the same for the full hair that isn't a hat cut and now I'm going to create the other hat cut so I'm just going to adjust the position of the cube to uh, create the next hat I'm going to use the boolean modifier again set it to difference and then select the cube and apply it and then again I have to delete some faces that that's created and also that vertice that was surprisingly peeking out over there And then again, I'm going to uh, select the areas that I do not want to affect with my proportional editing so that I can hide them so they won't be affected. And I've just made visible the base game hat cut underneath there just so I could see where that one starts and finishes or like how close it is to the head so that I know where to move my own hair to. So now that one's done as well, I'm going to do the same thing, make sure that the base game hair is selected, then append them together and then delete uh, the hat cut right here, or the base game hat cut to leave only this one. And that has made it so that it has the exact same name as the base game hair that I'm going to um, import this over later. And one thing that I forgot after I made the hat cuts is that you need to re-weight paint uh, the edges to the hat because it loses its weight paint for some reason. And here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to blur the edges of the weight transfer that I did earlier just so it moves a little bit smoother in game. And that's just with a blur brush. You can't really see that big of a difference but it does actually make quite a bit of difference in game. It makes that the hair moves a lot less blocky. And you can change the size of your brush by <laughs> brush. <laughs> you can change the size of your brush by pressing F, and then uh, you just what do you do? Yeah, just move your mouse, and then it changes the um, radius of your brush. And if you're wondering why she's missing a head, that's actually in the rig right there. You can uh, delete or like hide parts of the rig just so you can have greater visibility of your mesh. So I'm just going to rename it. I've named this hair Mary Jane. And now I'm just going to go to um, a level of detail zero and import my new mesh. In the meantime, while that's importing, I'm just going to create the other level of detail, level of detail number one, by decimating uh, this mesh and all its hat cuts uh, by 0.7. And that reduces the poly count, uh, also reducing the level of detail with it. If you're wondering what the level of detail is, it's when you're very zoomed in into the game, the level of detail will be higher. But if you zoom out a lot, uh, it won't need quite as much detail. So to make sure that the game runs smoother, they 
decrease the level of detail, the poly count, so that it's not that heavy for the game to run. So I've also uh, imported the texture that I created in the previous video and uh, oh, I'm doing like many things at once. So I'm still creating uh, different levels of detail. So I think uh, I've missed what level of detail I'm on. But basically I'm doing that by uh, decimating. Oh, that was level of detail too. Okay, <laughs> I put it in the name. Uh, I just got confused myself there because I uploaded the texture. Probably didn't want to look at the old texture over my new hairs. <laughs> I don't think I actually changed the um, specular or shadow in this. I just went with the one that we already had. Oh, I've removed the shadow. Am I keeping this? Yeah, I'm just keeping the rest as it is. I'm like, I'm sure it won't interfere. So anyway, now we're into Photoshop because I'm going to create uh, different swatches. And the way that I did this um, so this is the lazy way. The correct way would be to actually just combine the two textures for all the colors. But what I'm doing here is I've created the already combined uh, texture that I had and I've made it into a grayscale. Now I'm copying the color of all the hair swatches and I'm adding that as um, a mask. And then right now what I've done is I've used an overlay um, but I'm going for multiply actually because overlay works if you have a grayscale overlay over a color but multiply works better if you put a color over a grayscale and usually I do this the other way around I put a grayscale over the color which is why I was like why is the overlay not working but multiply works if you're putting a color over a grayscale so anyway whew. so uh yeah this is a uh, swatch number Oh, two, I guess. <laughs> I'm not going to show you the all of them. I'm just, I did do all of them, but um, uh, just so you get an idea. So basically my grayscale is a little bit too dark to capture the color correctly, which is why every time I'm doing this, I'm having to light the color later on, but I'm going to all the swatches. Um, eye dropping, is that an eye drop tool? I think so. Uh, and then applying that color onto my overlay and then instantly you get a different swatch of hair. So this is the absolute lazy way of doing and it's not always perfect and I must say the colors are not completely the same as Max's Match but that's also because I don't necessarily like all the Max's Match colors so I try to make some of the colors that I really don't like slightly less that I don't like it. <laughs> Um, but I don't I don't know if I like my version of the colors any better. Anyway, this is just so you can have an idea of how you can easily create different colors. I mean, you don't have to make the maxes match. You can make any color you want. Like this, this baby poop yellow is not one of my favorites. <laughs> ah, so uh, actually, once I've, I've done this, I'm, I'm trying very hard to turn it into a color that I do like but I don't know if in the end it's any better I mean I'm just experiencing uh, experimenting a little bit so uh, yeah you can do that with the hue and saturation um, reducing the saturation obviously makes it more gray and then you can play around with the colors um, so yeah there's loads of different ways that you can actually change the color now this is actually a bit sad because that is actually my favorite blonde color and it wasn't working out 100% the way I wanted it so I'm actually having to play around with the color and the brightness uh, quite a lot um, to try and create uh, the color that I want. Uh, I don't think I captured the color quite as much as I wanted to. Uh, it's okay in the end but uh, that is really my favorite color hair in The Sims so I was a bit like ah oh, this this technique is not working perfectly for this color <laughs> but in the end it's uh, it's passable. Passable. So also what you kind of lose by using this technique is that the colors in game have a lot more variance to it. Like it has, it's not just a color, like it has, like as it goes lighter, it, it like, it has a little bit more warmth and as it goes darker, it loses a bit of its warmth. So there's a bit more of a color spectrum 
in it. Whereas if you use this technique, you lose that. You just get one color and then there's the light or the dark effect in there. But hey, as I said before, this is the lazy way of doing it. If you wanted to do it properly, then you would have to adjust all the textures from both hairs and combine them in the same way that I did the first one. And to be frank, I usually only create the hairs that I make in a certain color of the character that I'm creating because usually I'm creating hairstyles or clothes for a particular character which is why I never bother with other colors um so <laughs> but you know if you wanted to if you as a person if you were creating a hair wanted to have different colors then this is definitely an easy way of doing it you do need photoshop I do not know how to work any other uh a graphic graphic design program anyway I use photoshop <laughs> I don't know how to use anything else <laughs> I think I skipped ahead a little bit here so we're on 10 now we're actually on the gray colors and as you notice that the grays aren't actually like full-on gray they do still have a little bit of color in them so the saturation is also a great way to add a more pop of color as you could see it really lacked uh, in in color there it was too saturated and then I'm also using the color balance to uh, adjust the colors even further so now I'm just going back to the Sims 4 studio and I'm adding a load of swatches so I can import all my new textures over it or into it, into it, over it. Yeah, you get what I mean. So one by one, I'm just adding all the colors and then I'm also adjusting um, the swatch thumbnail to be the correct color. Because otherwise you'll never know what hair you're selecting. <laughs> So anyway, I skipped ahead because that was boring to watch. <laughs> so now I'm in game just showing you how the hair works. And as you can see, I've got a couple of different swatches. I didn't do all of them, I don't think, but uh, most of them are in there. So yeah, now you can have this sim in different hair colors. Woohoo! Or this sim, I meant this hair. I didn't create a sim for it. <laughs> So that's all. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial or learned something or maybe in some other way or form it was helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me in the comments down below or on my website. Anyway, have a good day. See you later and bye bye.